everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're looking at a few more lightweight browsers. Now, if you've seen the previous lightweight browser videos, um, you know, they've been very popular. I've gotten uh, you know a lot of views on that, and at the same time, I have received a lot of requests for reviewing this browser, that browser, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, I've started taking a look at a few others. Uh, if you have requested one, please be patient because the list was fairly long and it's just going to take me a little while to get through all of them. Um, let me go and drag it. Right here is my browser list. And um, these are the ones that, I, that I'm, I've either looked at or in the process of looking at. And if you saw the previous videos, um, you know, what I did was this this shows the RAM usage for just a single window open on a particular browser. Um, now today we're going to take a look at two from the KDE camp, uh, Reconk and Conquer. Reconk is down here at 28 megs of RAM, so you know very lightweight. Um, you know, until I started looking at this one, you know, I was thinking that, you know, Midori was the champ as far as offering plenty of features but being lightweight. But, uh, you know, Reconk beats it by about, you know, almost 10 megs. Um, Conquer's up here at 73, so quite a bit heavier, but still, you know, Firefox, which is, I'm considering Firefox to be my, my uh, mid level. Uh, browser as far as memory uses. Firefox is at 107, so you know we're still roughly 25% lighter uh, as far as RAM goes than Firefox, so no complaints there. Of course, you can see some of these other browsers: Fidelity, Opera, Maxthon, Aurora. You know we're in the 200s. Maxon up to 360, Aurora 481, and then Chromium slash Chrome is way up there at 535. Um, Chromium, it, as much as I like the Chrome-based browsers, you know they are memory hogs. And you know, uh, if you open up a few few windows, you know, a few tabs, it, there is no trouble getting above a gig of RAM. So um, you know, if you're if you're a little light on the uh, on the RAM on your system. Um, if you if you need a lot of tabs, don't go with Chromium. <laughs> anyway, let's start out this review by taking a look at Reconk. Let me move this out of the way and pull this down, and let's get this browser open. Okay, so here we are on our default launch page for uh, uh, for Reconk, and uh, you know it's essentially a favorites page. You can go and set it up as a speed dial, just like you would. Um, you know, Opera has something similar, and there's other browsers that have that have uh, you know similar uh, quick launchers. You can go and add stuff to the quick launcher either by using this Add Favorites, or when you go to a web page, um, you'll have a little star over in this corner, and you can either select to make something a favorite or just bookmark it. Now. So that's kind of some of the good stuff. One of the bad things that I've been running into is this thing frequently crashes and freezes up on me. Um, now, part of it may be because I am on a GTK-based uh, desktop, and uh, this is a QT application. Um, you know, maybe the, the whole KDE thing and, and GNOME thing are not playing together very nicely, but like I said, I have had nothing but trouble with this browser. Uh, and I've tried a couple of other uh, Qt-based browsers and not had this trouble with it. So I don't know if it's just this this uh, browser or, or, you know, what's the deal. But I have been having all kinds of trouble with it. Let's, let me go and try and pull something up here. Let's search for something to do with Star Trek. Okay, the search seemed to work fine. Um, now let's try going to this home page. And as you see, we, it like freezes up before it completely renders the entire page. Uh, well, you know, maybe it's, you know, there is a lot of graphics here. Let's, and see, it won't let me go back. 
Um, let's try something. If you go to Wikipedia, that's not very graphic intensive. And once again, we freeze up before we're completely rendered. And, uh, you know, it's still working, working, working. So, like I said, maybe it's because I'm on a GTK environment. I don't know. But I've been having this trouble ever since I started looking at this browser. So, it's nice that it's nice and lightweight. But um, the lightweight part is completely useless if I can't use the browser. So, anyway, I'll... Like I said, may, it may be because of being on the GNOME environment. I don't know. Um, I'll kind of show you some of the other features here. And, uh, you know, maybe those of you that are on uh, a KDE-based environment, uh, uh, give it a try. Let me know whether uh, you can get anything out of this browser. Anyway, so you can go and add your bookmarks through here. Uh, we've got a history page showing all the sites that you've been to and uh, all of your downloads. If you continue on scrolling on down here to um, configure Reconc, you can see you got quite a variety of um, uh, you know different options here. Down here on the bottom you got you know there's tons of options for uh, for search engines um, and I mean, I've got mine set for, for Google, but I mean, you can see just tons and tons of options for search engines. You can add more, do some editing, all that kind of stuff. You can create shortcuts for all these different, uh, all these search for search engines. So tons of options as far as that goes. Um, you got some general options here. Um, as far as setting up a uh, what do you want to be your default home page, where you want to save files to, um, how you want your tabs to behave, uh, plenty of customization for your uh, for your fonts. Um, this runs on the WebKit engine, so you know you've got all your settings for WebKit through here. Uh, how you want to handle privacy, and then. Advanced, really this isn't as much an advanced selection as it is uh, just a general throw off for all the other options. But anyway, you see we're still not loaded with, uh, definitely not that one, and uh, we're still trying to finish loading this one. So, you know, I really wanted this one to work with how light it was, but, uh, it, you know, it's just not happening. Uh, so... Unfortunately, uh, my review of, uh, of Reconc is not very long. <laughs> All right, here we are in Conquer, and uh, this is the default start page. And uh, first thing to point out on Conquer is it is not just a browser. You can use this as uh, your file manager as well. If you click on Home folder here, boom uh, you know you can pull up your um, you know use this as, a, as your file manager um, you'll show your uh, your favorites along here um, you know just use this as you know as you would any other file manager and as this is a KDE based application you have options galore um, you drop down options are you know you got a fair amount of different things that you can do with it as well as your drop down menu from the top I mean as everything in KDE you got options galore so uh, you know if you're going to use it as your file manager you know awesome but um, beyond just the basic of opening files and that sort of thing um, there is a little bit of a learning curve because there are just so many options. But let me go back to um, let's go back to the browser and or use this as a browser. So because that's what I really wanted to kind of show off. Um, let's do a search for some. Let's go and do that a whole Star Trek search again. And uh, search pulls up pretty quick. And let's try rendering the page. And uh, 
boom, you're there right away. So, uh, you know, the, the issues that I was having with Reconch, it definitely doesn't translate over into Conquer. I mean, this one, uh, I've tried all kinds of sites and whatnot, had no trouble whatsoever rendering pages. Um, it's fairly snappy. Uh, so, you know, definitely no, no trouble as far as pulling up pages. Um, and you can come over here. Where was it? Uh, yeah, if you click that right there, that drop down will give you basically your your recent history. Um, your uh, you can bookmark stuff and add it along here. And actually, I believe that uh, let's let's go and add a bookmark here. Yeah, and the so that you'll get bookmarked along here. And you can you can come down here to edit bookmarks. And let me go and open that up. And you can categorize your bookmarks um, much like you know you can in Firefox and in um, and also in Chrome uh, or Chromium as well. You can put your bookmarks in folders so you can categorize them. You can do the same thing here. Um, very nice for uh, you know if you have a lot of bookmarks, keeping them organized. Speaking of the multiple options, if you come up here to, uh, where was it, settings, toolbar shown, um, you've got some extra toolbars that you can add so that you can um, quickly, if you want to do a split view and have multiple windows open at the same time on the same pane, you can do that. Um, you know, I typically use the split view more for... Um, you know when I'm using a file manager but you know I can see that this would be you know if you're doing some research and need to have you know a couple things open at the same time you know this could be pretty useful to you you know typically uh, you know I'm uh, especially on uh, when I'm doing my research I might have a couple windows open side by side um, but something like this you know I could definitely get into this uh, as far as, you know, like I said, when I'm doing research, uh, having multiple windows open at the same time, that sort of thing. And you can do a lot of windows. <laughs> and uh, get it back to a single pane. There we go. Okay, so anyway, back to single pane. So that, uh, you know, that is, you know, a useful feature you can add there. Also, in these toolbars shown, this HTML toolbar, this can be kind of useful for those of us that don't have young eyes anymore uh, because you can come over here and uh, enlarge the font so that it's a little easier to read. Uh, you can also come up back up here to settings you can also show sidebar for your bookmarks and and go that route um, you know if you do that you know get rid of maybe you get rid of that toolbar and let's get rid of that toolbar also I don't know you know uh, set it up the way that you like but uh, you know for a lot of people that may be a more efficient use of your uh, of your screen real estate um, you know all depends on how you roll and that's one of the great things about uh, just about all the KDE applications is you just have so many um, options as far as setting things up but uh, uh, you know it's essentially the sky's the limit well, I definitely like the uh, the, the Conquer browser. Um, you know, the the multiple side or not multiple sidebars, but multiple pane view. Um, that one really sold me on it. Everything seemed to render correctly. Didn't have any issues as far as that goes. It's fairly fairly snappy. Um, not quite as fast as uh, maybe Firefox, Chrome, Adori, that sort of thing, but uh, still fairly snappy. No, no issues with uh, not rendering or anything like that. So, um, and then with the the Buku KDE options, I mean, uh, 
you know, it, it's impossible to to have a video where I would go over every configuration option for this thing. It's just there's just too many. Um, but uh, definitely a very nice browser. And then throwing in the fact that it's fairly lightweight and you get a um, uh, you know file manager on top of it. Uh, you know, love this application. Uh, Reconk, I wish that it would have worked better for me because, uh, you know, it was so lightweight. I was really, you know, I was really fooling for it, but uh, it just it didn't happen. I'm hoping that it is, uh, you know, it's just because uh, the whole GNOME and, and, uh, and uh, uh, QT application thing was weren't compatible because, uh, like I said, I really wanted it to work. I, in fact, I tried uninstalling and then reinstalling a couple times, hoping that, you know, maybe it was a bad install or something like that, but just never could get it to work right. So, um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of reviewing that I could do on it. Anyway, I think that about finishes this video up. Uh, probably the next one that I am going to do is Sea Monkey, which uh, it's based on uh, the Mozilla code, but has been community developed. Um, essentially, you've got you've got Firefox and Thunderbird and a couple of other applications all rolled into one suite. For those of us that were computing back in the early 90s, and and you would get you know the Mozilla suite. You know, this is this is basically the evolution of, of the of the Mozilla suite. Um, and I've re uh, I've reviewed uh, Sea Monkey in the past, but uh, you know it's been a while since I took a look at it, so uh, it's it's about time to to rehash that. Anyway, give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and. Um, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I will get to them as soon as possible, as always. And uh, give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks.